set up the camera. Pee, sit down, focus the camera. Pee, sit back down, still have to pee. <gasps> to what I'm calling a very candid get ready with me. I don't know everything that I'm going to talk about in this video. I just know that I have been feeling watered down lately on this channel and I feel like I just have a lot of stuff I want to talk to you guys about. I also have a lot of new makeup that I don't really think goes together. <laughs> My brain is honestly exhausted of trying to like fit things together in the ways that I feel like are intuitive. So, you know, like all cream or like, here's the concept that I think people are gonna click on. I have the airbrush bronzer, refillable, rechargeable, a French translation of refillable maybe? Of the, oh yeah, the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer. I also got a, like a PR package from Root Pretty. They reached out to me, gosh, I mean, it has been, a lot of months since I reviewed them. Like it's been since last year, I think. And I was not like over the moon impressed with all of their products, but a lot of their stuff was pretty cool. But they did send me, they sent me some skincare stuff that I like am not that stoked on, but the Pretty Paint Cream Blush and Lip, and I have that in the shade Holly. <laughs> Uh, and then some white gold illuminator, which I'm actually really pumped to try. We're gonna be using, I think, the Beauty Bakery Foundation again today, just because I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think I have, oh, I've got the Rowan, the, I've got the third Rowan lip gloss here that I have not tried yet in the shade Scout. So this might end up being a really, um, a disconnected kind of look. I'm not really sure like how I'm gonna fit a cream cheek and lip into an otherwise kind of powdered look, but we're just gonna figure it out as we go. And honestly, if this ends up looking like total crap, I really don't care because I'm really just here to talk to you guys. So let's get started. If you guys only knew the amount of burps and gasps and hiccups that I edit out of my videos, oh, and wiping my nose. We're gonna talk about pregnancy in this video. If that triggers you, don't watch this video, but we're gonna talk about it a little bit later on. Starting with the Beauty Bakery Instabake. If you missed this video, you should go watch it because it was awesome. So anyway, yeah, how have you guys been doing? Because I am not doing that awesome right now. I'm gonna be totally honest. And I feel like when people make videos, a lot of times where they're like, you know, a creator and they're like, I'm not doing that awesome. It's usually having to do, why am I, I wanna spread this out a little thinner than that. It's usually having to do with feeling like their channel isn't really reading them, you know? And I know that's a, that's a gross generalization, but like I do empathize with people who make those videos. And I think that that's kind of like where I'm at right now in a lot of ways. And it's for a lot of different reasons. So one is just that like the current situation is like, it, you know, the protests and everything like that. It's been really, really hard to talk about because I'm a white person. <laughs> And I kind of started in the beginning of it being like so self-exempting, like, oh, you know, um, I'm not a racist. And so like, therefore this conversation isn't about me. And I think that that's like <laughs> extremely common. And then you start to realize like, oh, wait a second. It's not about like burning churches. <laughs> it's about, um, you know, being part of a system that you've been inculcated into that honestly, like I wish we could speak more candidly about. And I, you know, I have been trying to be so palatable and so right. You know what I mean? Like perfect. I think that I'm so scared of criticism um, in any respect on my channel, not just having to do with racism, but like, I hate getting nasty comments. Even if they're from really ignorant people, it just brings me down. And one really valuable thing that I did learn recently, I was talking to my mom about this and we've been talking about kind of like Buddhist approaches to things and she sends me like Buddhism TikToks. She's so freaking cute. But anyway, we were talking about how like even in traffic, right? Somebody really pisses you off and you honk at them and you cut them off and you curse behind the wheel. And of course they, by virtue of the fact that you're in a car, they can't hear you. And so what have you really done? You've ruined your own afternoon. You're taking that crab home with yourself. That person is probably completely unaffected by what you just did. And so I have learned that engaging with people who say nasty things, even if they're just nasty according to me, even if their intentions were good, I just don't respond and I will often delete them or remove them from my channel, meaning that the next time they try and comment, it will just disappear. 
if that's happening to you, you've probably been blocked. That's because if I engage with those people and try and correct them in a lot of ways, or not even correct them, but just like, I don't know, fight with them or argue with them or whatever, I will feel worse. Like it will ruin my day. I will feel bad for kind of like perpetuating the negativity. And so that's always been like my philosophy about it. And so I think that that's made me kind of get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller in scope on my channel because I am trying so hard not to piss people off. And so, that leads me to my next point. By the way, I'm going in with the ColourPop now. I can't, I can, literally can't find it on my desk, the Beauty Bakery one, which is a shame. But anyway, um, I think that that fear of criticism has also made it so that, I don't know, I was very like insulated initially about like having conversations around racism and around what was going on. And then as soon, like anytime I would figure something new out, I would feel like, oh, now, now I get it. Like now I'm so empowered and blah, blah, blah. And so it's been really hard because I try and be so like, almost like PR, like edited, you know what I mean? And like only say the right things. And if I'm like unsure about something being misconstrued, I just like won't say it because I'm so scared of criticism. But then I watched Rob Beauty Christie's video um, where she donated all of her AdSense. And <laughs> I was like, wow, gosh, that girl can just talk right off the cuff, can't she? Like she just absolutely is so good at articulating her mind and she probably wouldn't even think so. Like you watch her bloopers and she's just like blah, 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 blah. Like she just includes all these things of her stumbling on her words, but she did not stutter <laughs> in that rant. And I was like, I want to, like it just kind of shed light on how much I feel like I have to edit myself and stay in my lane in order to keep from offending anyone, anyone. You know what I mean? I'm afraid of offending anyone because I don't want to get any negative comments and like that's just I don't know like I just kind of had to over the last couple of days or whatever I've realized that criticism is helpful at least from people who are polite and who are trying to like actually help me learn granted I don't deserve that from black people you know what I mean like I don't think that white people deserve to have you know black people trying to educate them make them like comfortable the whole time but it is an easier way to get people to like listen to you, you know, to, to get more, what is it, more <sighs> flies with bees with honey than vinegar or something. Bees are better than flies, I will tell you that. Yeah, and so I think that like the biggest shift for me, and of course I don't claim to know honestly anything. <laughs> I'm almost done reading White Fragility, like that's about where I'm at right now. Um, but I will say that like, the biggest turning point for me was understanding that the whole idea around being uncomfortable when you're being corrected by somebody on something that was a preconceived notion is something that actually is like ingrained in us. It's not inherent, you know, it's not something we were born with. It's like this mechanism that is like instilled in us, I guess. Oh, at some point in time or over time, gradually over time. I don't know, I posted something about it on Instagram and it was like a, a repost from someone else. And I was like, this kind of nails it because it was talking about how a lot of times when we receive criticism, we think that someone is over there like keeping score and it's making us unlovable. You know, someone's just basically building a case for us being unlovable. You know, this is a person who is, you know, betraying my, uh, my expectations or my pre preconceived notions or whatever about that person. And so, now I'm disappointed because they're not who I thought that they were. Therefore, I don't know, like I dismiss them, I unsubscribe, I unfollow, I snark at them or whatever, I reject that person. And that rejection is like this ultimate fear for a lot of us, at least for me. And that actually, it's not even so much that like I need to move past the fear of rejection as much as it is, people are a lot more forgiving than you think. And I think that a lot of people are happy to help one another learn. And one of the things that like I have come around to is just like, don't feel so uncomfortable when you're being corrected. It's not that hard to say, you're right, I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> like, and it's just so much more effective because here's the thing, right? We as white people are running from these conversations as fast as we can. We are trying to evacuate the building, the building being our own hearts. I'm going in with the Beauty Bakery powder so you guys get to see it in action here. We are so terrified of these conversations when really, when you finally start having them and you humble yourself before the actual content, the actual subject matter, and you like open your mind to it, you're able to stop running from that conversation, which is like 
ultimate freedom. It's a referendum on this like part that I play in all of this that I never realized because I've been told my entire life that it was impolite to talk about this stuff. Because we have. <laughs> and it's by design. And so like, when you free yourself of that, like I watched this video of this woman actually in Austin, this black woman at the protests, and she was just basically getting the cops to stand down. This was like a week ago. And she kept saying, do you see yourself soften? Do you see your posture soften when you understand the truth? The truth will set you free. And I was like, the truth will set you free. And it's true. I, I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. I learn something new every single day. And honestly, I said this on my, my Instagram, but like, I feel so fortunate and lucky that all this information that's like, it's definitely always been there, but now it's okay to talk about. And when I, I'll get to that in a second, but it's flooding at me from all directions. And like, that's awesome. Like it's almost unavoidable to learn right now. And that is, it's a luxury, it's amazing. And so yeah, just being able to like put my ego aside, I guess, so that I can learn. It's so unbelievably freeing. And to me, it feels just like when I'm reading, you know, like a Brene Brown book or something like that, where I learn something about my own brain, a, an old patterning, right? An old mechanism, an old defense mechanism in my brain. Oh my God, <laughs> this is enormous. I was like, why is this $55, which is still crazy. Okay, it's still crazy, but it is so, it is so huge. And that is a really, really light bronzer shade. Cool, it does. I think it comes in four shades. So I ordered the lightest because I've ordered like her medium shades in the color corrector before. And I was just like, that's too dark. Okay, yes. And so when you are essentially learning about an old pattern that you have been perpetuating in your own mind, an old defense mechanism, and you can pick it up at its roots and say, I understand why I made this initial decision to have this like self-protection mechanism, but I recognize now that it no longer serves me. Like that's cognitive behavioral therapy right there. If we can look at racism that way, it just becomes part of your self-help, mental health, self-love journey because you're beginning to understand something else in your life that you took as a given that it has hindered you and has made you afraid and it has made you egoful, which is not a word. Um, and to be able to dismantle that in your own mind is freeing just like finding out that you have some kind of hang up about relationships or something like that. You know what I mean? And it being able to free you up to be more uh, vulnerable and think like that vulnerability, it's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same thing, but we have, I swear you guys, like bias is like this. It is so crazy. Like it just absolutely, it, it's everywhere and you have to like, be mindful. It's a mindfulness practice of just like going through your day every single day and just trying to recognize it in action. And I just, uh, am about to finish. I've been working through it kind of slowly because I, I just feel like any, any like uh, self-help book, I always try and work through really slowly. White fragility. I can never remember the word fragility. It is so freeing in that sense. But at the same time, it's written by a white woman, Robin D'Angelo, and she has a perspective that allows you to relate to her um, in the way that she's like, I know so much about this. I have been studying this for my entire like adult life and I still am guilty of it. Like I still like every day I hear myself say something and I go, wow, like that is so that is just so coded, that is so biased, that is so this or that. And I think that that's the essence of it is just like, we're not gonna solve this. We're going to continue like integrating it into ourselves every single day. Now, I do wanna talk about like, by the way, this bronzer is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it's awesome. Like what an awesome, oh, oh my God. I'm at the risk of like highlighting my own struggle here, it's hard to find a bronzer that doesn't just stamp right onto my skin. And this is actually so natural and believable and easy to use. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what's safe to talk about? Like I definitely feel like this has been something that because it's in the conversation right now, suddenly white people are punishing other white people because we're like, well, why weren't you talking about this before? A close person to me the other day 
basically told me that it was my own privilege and white fragility that I wouldn't buy from Pat McGrath because she's, <laughs> her cruelty-free status is just like up in the air. Like she's never been confirmed. She's never made any effort or anything like that to confirm her cruelty-free status. And so because of that, I owe it to the community to not vote with my dollar for that until she does. There's a lot of brands I would love to buy from that I can't buy from that uh, because they're, they're not cruelty-free. And like, I'm just, that's a, an important thing to me. And I got absolutely railroaded about it. Like, oh, that's, you know, like it's it's not the time to pre-qualify black, uh, black owned brands, um, you know, based on your own biases. And I'm just like, and this was, you know, a white person, like it, it, this crusade among white people to out anti-racist each other is so unhelpful. It is so unproductive. It is so, Oh, and it's, and it's so white. <laughs> it's such a part of the white phenomenon. It's like, oh, I just found out who Pat McGrath is and I'm going to shame everybody else because I'm going to pretend that I've been here the whole time. No, like what's safe to talk about has shifted because like I said, we were inculcated into the idea, a, a culture of this being a faux pas to talk about. I was a hairstylist for eight years, right? And I would have to sit there. I would have to sit there as this woman who I did her hair every single week would say things to me like, well, you know, don't you really think we should keep the White House the White House? And I'm just like, you know, and it's just, we were obviously like the customer is always right. And we were taught that there were like things you weren't allowed to talk about, politics, money, race, and religion. Like those were just things that were not okay to address. And I lived in the South. And just even talking to my mom about it, it was just so interesting how like, She's like, I didn't know I could die. I didn't know I could have a conversation about this. And like, that doesn't let us off the hook. But at the same time, the reality is if I had posted the kinds of things that are okay to post now on my social media a month ago, I would have gotten my head cut off. People would have been like, where is this coming from? Like, who do you think you are? Some kind of like, social justice warrior, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like that's how it felt. It felt like it was not just not part of the conversation, but it was like literally not okay to talk about, which is bizarre and crazy now. But like at the same time, I started out a couple weeks ago, just as ignorant as the next person. So, I mean, there you go. <sighs> okay, now we're gonna go in with, we're gonna, we're gonna try and go in with some blush. Actually, we should do the highlighter first because we can do the cream last kind of thing. Anyway, so a part of me right now is firing on all cylinders being like, wow, Khaki, there are so many things that people could really hate about everything that you just said and say something either that you uh, phrased something wrong or from the other direction, wow, I can't believe you're still talking about this. Like, I don't know, I think I've managed to alienate all of those people. That was one thing that I didn't realize was like that people hadn't gone back and watched my old videos and realized like, what a raging liberal I am. And I, <laughs> I think that just because I'm this like, you know, white lady who likes to wear J. Crew and Lululemon, I think a lot of people think I'm like some kind of mm, white lady who J. Crew and Lululemon. I don't know. Like, I think that a lot of people make assumptions about me, but I have really made my content not about that kind of thing because it was like, I used to, I used to talk about it on my Instagram, right? Where, um, you know, I would kind of like almost, that's so pretty. Oh my gosh. This is the root pretty. Uh, the, what did they call this? White gold illuminator. Like <laughs> this is giving me middle school body glitter vibes in the best way possible. <laughs> like I know that that sounds like when you look at this, it's just like intoxicatingly sparkly. Mm, I like that very much. I, I did, I, I used to like live tweet or live, you know, Instagram story, the uh, State of the Union and stuff like that. And while people agreed with me in most cases, the biggest, like the most impactful feedback that I got from people was that like, this isn't why I come to your channel. This isn't why I come to your social media. I don't want to hear about politics. And I heard that loud and clear. I was like, you know what? You're right. This is not the place for this. And I do understand the distinction between racism being a problem that needs to be addressed and just showering people with politics because I genuinely don't think that you can change people's minds on politics. Like you either, be like you believe what you believe basically. And like my opinion's not going to change that. But I do feel weirdly, 
I don't know, I just felt so weird about people being shocked that I cared about Black Lives Matter. In hindsight, I don't really know what I would have done differently to kind of keep that from happening, but at the same time, like, it does make me wonder just what, what signals did I fire off that made you think that I, I don't know. That is <laughs> how I'm feeling on all of that. And that is why I feel like, you know, yes, I've been wanting to talk about it, but also I also don't feel like I'm the person necessarily to be like this resource to people. And I did kind of open myself up, not necessarily as like a resource, like a know-it-all resource, but just like, hey guys, if you wanna talk about this and have questions um, that, you know, you just wanna to talk to someone in a way that is gonna be unjudgmental because you're afraid. Oh, wow, this is like almost like a powder finish. How nice, like it's a cream, but it's super, super like mattified. How pretty is that? Let me see if I can get a sponge in there. I don't know, I don't know about that. Let's see. I did order the new, two of the new Ritual Defeat, uh, what are they, like serum blushes or something? They're supposed to be a different formula than their other blush that I have and we will compare them. I'm pretty excited to give Ritual Defeat another shot. They really disappointed me before and I feel like, I feel like we need a redemption story on them. So, ew. Again, this is the shade Holly. Root pretty. Y'all know what you're doing. But yeah, I opened myself up kind of on my Instagram stories and was like, hey guys, you know, if you wanna have a conversation, I'm here and I'm not gonna judge you because I, where I come from in the country, I know that there are people, and I know, I can only speak for where I come from, but where I come from in the country, there are definitely people who want to learn and want to have someone kind of show them the next step because I, it was mostly triage for me. It was not people who were just like, let's have a scholarly conversation. It was a lot of people being like, this feels weird and I don't know even how to start, you know? And like that was, I felt okay talking about that kind of stuff. But after a little while, my inbox was filled, like filled with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And people not always saying really nice things. <laughs> I just got to the point where like, I, I literally for about three days straight, spent the entire day on my phone. And I was like, this is not healthy. This is not healthy for me. I need to take a step back from this. I am not an authority on this. And I need to regain my own reserves in order to make this more sustainable because your girl is burnout. And we're gonna talk about why I'm so burnt out, okay? It is A, because of you know, just trying to figure out how to navigate this on social media. Because like I said, I personally, again, never felt safe. Safe is definitely not something that's like high on my mind right now for myself, but like at the time I never felt safe kind of bringing this into the conversation myself. And I think that that's, that's the point, right? The point is that we are going through a social shift, a societal shift, a paradigm shift, where making this okay to talk about is not something one of us could have done. You know, now a leader could have done it, but I couldn't have done it. You know, and that's like where I have to kind of recognize what I have control over and what I don't. And I think that I initially, you know, you have that urge to fix things and I just wanted to have control over it and you have to let go, you know, and just like not, just not try and control it. There's like freedom in knowing that you're not in control sometimes. <sighs> Okay, we've got a little complexion look going and I like it. I like it a lot. That actually worked out beautifully. <laughs> that highlighter is so good. <laughs> uh, so what next? What's an eyeshadow palette that I have not used in a while? Let's do some rose quartz. Let's do some Aether rose quartz. I can do that really mindlessly. <sighs> so other reasons that I'm feeling overwhelmed and maybe like I'm watering myself down on my channel. First of all, pregnancy sucks. For the people who think that that is ungrateful, I'm trying to just resist the urge to not, just to, to, to only say things that are completely unoffensive. <laughs> because the truth of my life right now is that I am white knuckling it through pregnancy. Okay, I'm having a really, really, really annoying and hard time psychologically having to do with pregnancy. And that is because of a lot of things I will enumerate. One, and probably the biggest one, is that 
lived with an eating disorder for most of my life, probably age 11 to about age 25 when I finally recognized it for what it was. And if you are <laughs> at all familiar with eating disorders, you know that they don't just leave. <laughs> you don't just decide <laughs> that you're not gonna have one anymore and poof, all your body image issues go away. No, no, no. Um, I was never a uh, thrower upper. I don't like throwing up. Um, but I did throw up a lot in college because I drank way too much and I think that that was part of what ruined my teeth and why I had to get them replaced. We're just being fully transparent today. But uh, <laughs> the thing that I did was just, you know, very, 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 very dramatic restriction. And it had a lot to do with uh, stomach issues, undiagnosed stomach issues, and also my teeth being very brittle and soft my entire life. And so I ground them at a very young age. And as a result, the nerve endings were at the very top of my teeth. Crunchy things really like made me upset because they would hurt my teeth so much. And um, I just always had really, really bad teeth and really, and I think honestly drinking so much and like, you know, getting sick from it and stuff like that in, high, in college. I think that I disrupted my own like gut microbiome so badly that it still isn't okay. And like, I still have like really weak digestion. That was always a big reason that I would restrict. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go vegan. Okay, I'm gonna go raw vegan. Okay, these foods are okay. These foods are not kind of thing. And one of the biggest things that made a difference for me was, uh, you know, finally stopping eating gluten because that was the thing that was actually for a long time keeping me from putting on weight, but at the same time, giving me this really big distended belly of uh, inflammation basically, that made me feel like I needed to keep restricting. So, huh, <laughs> that was one of the big things that I kind of overcome, overcame in my uh, mid twenties. And I, Definitely think that, you know, while I began to understand the reasons behind all of these things, it didn't make them go away. It didn't make my like need for perfection and to see perfection in the mirror, it didn't make that go away. And in a lot of ways, I mean, I always talk about how perfection is really dangerous, but in a lot of ways, it didn't just make me strive for certain things. It also made me, it gave me really bad like dysmorphia, right? Where, you know, I was not seeing reality in the mirror. I was judging certain parts of myself against completely unrealistic standards and comparing myself to people who were 10 years younger than me and things like that. And just really never honoring myself. I mean, God, you know, uh, my friends were like joking the other day about how they had terrible boyfriends in their twenties. And my friend goes, I wasted my twenties body on him. And I was like, I wasted my twenties body on hating my body. Okay. If I could take anything back, it would be absolutely being so cruel to my physical self. Like I was so mentally mean to myself about my body. And now, God, okay, well, let's go. Let's go on pregnancy. So first of all, my boobs are huge. I thought my entire life, like I never really properly hit puberty, you know what I mean? And like got teased for it and everything like that. But I always thought, I was like, oh, you know, it would just make me feel so sexy to just have boobs. False. <laughs> I want them to go away. Oh my gosh. And I think it's just because I've never had them before. And I've always just been very like used to and loved like never having to worry about wearing a bra or anything like that. My mom used to always tell me because my mom always had really small boobs too. She was like, wait till you get pregnant. You'll learn real quick how much they suck. And I was like, no, I'm gonna, rah, rah, rah. you know, maybe I'll get, and I, I genuinely like considered getting fake boobs and all this stuff at one point in my life. And fact is, first of all, I think I expected that um, <laughs> when my boobs grew, that they would be like fake boobs. Nope, they're just mine, but bigger. And I hate them. They're in the way, they're annoying, and I can't wait for them to leave. And so that's d completely distorted my image of myself. And then, oh yeah, I have a baby in my belly. I've put on about 10 pounds. I'm about um, 20, I'll be 21 weeks in a few days, which is a perfectly normal, normal by the you know medical charts or whatever amount of <laughs> amount of weight to have gained for this point in my pregnancy. Fact is, I do not feel sexy. I do not like what I see in the mirror. I feel like a monster, and I felt like a monster since the moment I started showing because your girl is not okay. <laughs> 
in my head, I'm not okay and I don't do well with change, especially in my physical body. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go in with a sample of the, it's like a deluxe sample from the birthday gift from Sephora or whatever, of work. The Lip and Chic from uh, Milk Makeup because while I like this blush from Root Pretty a lot, the more I put on, the more I realize how shimmery it is and we need a little bit of mattification. So I'm gonna go in with this. She's really pretty. So yeah, completely not okay in my head and literally like impossible for me to feel attractive or sexy. I feel pretty good from the neck up. You know what I mean? Like my skin's really, high, although pff, I tried that makeup for that wear test the other day that genuinely no one really cared about because I think that like most people are like, I come to your channel because I want to learn how to wear less makeup, not how to freeze a full beat for 24 hours. But anyway, I wore that foundation from Hourglass and it has like uh, octanoxate in it. Got a huge like cystic zit right here like immediately. Knowing your allergies is important. <sighs> but anyway, aside from just not recognizing who I see in the mirror, it doing a total number on my body, uh, on my mind, it makes it so that it's the equivalent of being on a road trip and just sitting there and going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I cannot forget that I'm pregnant. I can't just coast. I can't just <sighs> live my life. And it's making this feel eternal. Not to mention, I mean, honestly, guys, the virus and having to stay home and my husband suddenly staying home with me and everything was the best. Like I was honestly like, I felt really guilty because I was like, I have never been happier or more relaxed while the world is literally falling apart. And I'm sitting here like having this leisurely time. My channel was growing. Everybody was stuck at home and they were all like, you know, watching a lot of content and I felt really engaged with everybody. I don't know. I thought that I was handling everything really well when really it was just that I wasn't at the center of who was suffering. And that like, that was the actual crux of the issue. And so now the combination of feeling really stressed out about how to interact on social media, because I, don't know sometimes what the right next place to put my foot is. You know, I wanna include more black owned brands on my channel, but like at the same time, I am not going to spend my money on something that I wouldn't have spent my money on based on like my own interest in makeup. Like I'm not gonna buy a full coverage matte dry down foundation to wear test for you guys, because regardless of who owns the company, that's not the kind of makeup I like to wear, you know? And so I, I've been kind of like grappling with that in my brain at the same time. Not to say that there aren't a lot of black brands out there, but I'm just saying like that's something that I was just like, well, should I just buy everything? Like that's the weird stuff that's been going on in my brain. And I kind of like, again, don't know where to put my foot next sometimes. That's been super overwhelming. I had to close my, uh, my DMs basically. Like you can't close your DMs completely, but I made it so that only people who I follow could respond to my actual Instagram stories. And that has like totally just that has really shrunk things down. My requests, were, it was full, I had like a thousand requests. It was insane over the course of like a week. That in combination with just the annoyance of all the symptoms and constant awareness of being pregnant. So let me go ahead and enumerate this for you guys because my, at least I was always really curious about it when, <laughs> when I wasn't pregnant and a lot of my friends are really curious about it too. Here are just a few highlights of what pregnancy actually does. First of all, it makes you produce a lot more saliva. And so if you leave your mouth open for a little bit too long, you drool. It's very, very becoming. Your eye mucus changes. And so if you reach up and scratch your eye at any point, it burns so much that you need to go and like actually flush your eyes with water. You have about 50% more blood in your body. And so if you reach up and try and get something out from between your teeth, you bleed like a head wound and you can hear the blood in your body rushing in your ears all the time. It sounds like the ocean. Like you can feel your heartbeat in your whole head. And it's just, it's very ominous and it's not necessarily bad. It's just that you're constantly aware. That in combination with just really having a hard time looking at myself in the mirror, I'm just feeling like it all feels really endless to me right now. That said, let's do some eyeliner here. The comments that I have gotten from people, they're, they've only been a few, and they have thought that they were polite, but they were wrong about how I should keep my pregnancy off my main channel because people who have had issues getting pregnant are triggered by that. When I first announced my pregnancy, hello eyelash, 
I watched a lot of people unsubscribe, like instantly. And that was my first wake up call that I was like, okay, this is not something that is just like universally appreciated. Fine. And then, you know, I posted my Q and A thinking that people would be curious about what was going on in my life. A lot of people were, a lot of people really weren't. But the comments, honestly, about people, of just people being like, I can't watch this, this is insensitive, uh, you know, or even like thanking me for keeping it to a minimum on this channel. I just realized that it was another way that I was boxing myself in and giving myself one fewer thing about myself that I felt like I could share. And that's really not the point of my channel. I feel like the messaging overall around my pregnancy has been stick to makeup. And that's like, it's unfortunate, but it's a reality, but I would much rather people unsubscribe than try and tell me that I need to tailor my content. And I think I just need to like move past that on a personal level because it just was, I don't know, that was really hurtful to me because I'm excited about it, you know? <laughs> As I'm like complaining about all the symptoms and everything, I'm excited about having a baby. It's kind of like when I hated having a wedding. Like I wanted to be married, I never wanted to get married. I want a baby, but I just, this whole pregnancy thing is just like not magic, okay? <laughs> it freaking sucks. <laughs> yeah, and then there's like all of this like I just wanted to share some of my experience around like the judgments around pregnancy that I see online and stuff like that. And that I've heard from a lot of my friends because I have a lot, a lot of friends who are pregnant too. By the way, my friend had a, a very healthy little girl the other day, right after I posted uh, my video, what? what was that Monday, Tuesday, Monday? They are uh, headed home today and she is, she's beautiful and perfect and I'm very happy for her. I've seen some really wild stuff. First of all, that friend of mine who just had a baby she has chosen not to breastfeed. The shame around choosing not to breastfeed on like among the mommy community is unreal. I plan on trying to breastfeed, but if I can't breastfeed for some reason, like my mom, oh, she had tons of milk for my sister and no milk for me kind of thing. Like you just don't know. And just that whole idea that like, you're a bad person if you like either choose not to or you give up is completely ridiculous. There's also this shame around only wanting one child, which I'm just, it blows my mind. I only wanna have one kid. <sighs> right now, where I'm at, it sounds, I mean, granted, who knows? Maybe I'll just like, you know, in a couple of years, but I'm, I'm 33. I don't wanna have kids as close together as my mom had me and my sister. We are a year and two weeks apart. It's very, very close. And it made us rivals our entire lives. And I just, I don't wanna do that. And so I'd wanna wait at least a few years. And then I'm really in like outside of my actual risks and chances and all that of like having a, you know, a, an older pregnancy. I just don't think I'm gonna be in the mood to have a baby again at like 38. I just don't see that happening. So I might, I might serve to eat my words, but at the same time, I think that the shame is so, so, so unnecessary. And then finally, one thing that I saw on Instagram, not on Instagram, on Pinterest, I saw the most heinous pregnancy advice I have ever seen. And it was from this blogger with three children and she titled her blog post, how to have a belly only pregnancy. How to have a belly only pregnancy. Let that sink in for a second. This woman has had three children and because of her genetics, she's carried her weight entirely in her belly and probably walked around her entire pregnancy. People telling her, oh man, I just got eyeshadow all over my dress. Probably people telling her, wow, from the back, I can't even tell you're pregnant. And good for her. <laughs> Don't put that on other people. Don't put that on the rest of us. Are you kidding me? Like you're basically inventing a pregnancy version of the thigh gap, okay? A thigh gap depends entirely on whether or not you are genetically predisposed to have a thigh gap. Also, by the way, if it's like, you don't know what a thigh gap is, don't Google it. It's so stupid. It's like this teenager's way of shaming other people when their thighs touch. I know plenty of girls who are full figured who just because their, their hips are wider set genetically, their thighs don't touch. It's just genetics. It's just about the width of your hips. And I think that the way that you carry your weight during pregnancy is also very much genetic. It's not something that you can just read somebody's blog post 
and be body shamed into changing your diet and like counting macros while you're pregnant, which by the way is so offensive. Women have enough to freaking worry about being pregnant. Like I have so many dumb things that are just like hormonally swimming around in my brain at all times. Do I really need like some outside judgment on <laughs> my calorie intake? Like no. And the fact that this woman is like giving people like a way to micromanage their diet so that they have a belly only pregnancy, which by the way, I genuinely don't think that everybody is capable of. <laughs> like, No matter what you eat during pregnancy, like there are people who are going to carry their weight completely differently in their bodies. And she's just setting this like horrible, horrible standard based literally only on her own experience. And I just think that that is despicable. I think it's awful. I already have enough flipping body issues and now you're gonna tell me that I'm not being a good enough pregnant lady because I I'm carrying in my hips or in my back, you know? Like, screw you. I'm gonna put on some mascara and some brown mousse. And then we'll be back, we will be back. We will be back to put on some lips. Oh, another thing that happens when you're pregnant. This is fun. This happened to me night before last. So you pee, right? Like 800 times right before you go to bed because you want to stay hydrated during the day and you know, keep your baby and head all happy and hydrated and everything. And by the way, he's kicking. It's awesome. He's so freaking cute and active. And I go in, uh, what's the date today? Today is the 11th or something. So we go in in two weeks, I think. And, uh, and we get another like ultrasound and we get to see just exactly how enormous this child is because he's very, very big. Um, but anyway, yeah, you know, you're drinking all this water and then you pee about 25 times right before you go to bed because you can't fall asleep, or at least I can't fall asleep if I feel like I'm going to wet the bed, you know, logic. And then you wake up in the middle of the night, so dehydrated because LOL, you are the victim of pregnancy, okay? <laughs> like, the baby will get what he needs. <laughs> you suffer. And so you wake up so dehydrated that your tongue is actually stuck to the back of your mouth. Like, back in the back, the two corners behind your tongue, your tongue will actually be stuck because you're so parched. And so if you don't have a glass of water right next to you, and you don't put it back there, like drink the water in a way that washes that connection, like the, the really, really dry connection between your tongue and the inside of your mouth, like to disconnect that. And you just like wake up and try and like flex your tongue and try and get it to just like depart from your, like the back of your mouth, you will actually excoriate the skin on your tongue and maybe on the inside of your mouth as well uh, to where it feels raw and you'll strain the muscle and you will basically suffer with kind of this like side tongue throat ache for like a full day. And that was what I was dealing with yesterday because pregnancy is hilarious. Okay, peeing right now is a non-negotiable. I'll be right back. I put on too much brown mousse. To try and end this on some kind of optimistic note, because there's a lot of good stuff happening too. Let's go ahead and do some lips here. I wanna see what this color actually is before I choose a lip liner. So this is the Rowan Kiss My Liquid Lip Balm, and we've already seen it on my channel in Remy and in Charlie, and this is now Scout. So anyway, the bright spots in my life have been one, my husband, he is, he is so sweet and also, wow, wow. So like helpful and amazing. And honestly, wants to help more than I really wanna let him in a lot of ways. He's like, I'll make you lunch. And I'm like, I don't know what I wanna eat. I just eat really weird, like not normal things. Like I don't even know how to plan around it. He's like, I'll wake up at two in the morning and grill you watermelon. And I think that like, <laughs> he just always saw himself as being able to be like my hero in these situations. And the fact that I can't articulate what I want and what I need right now, because it changes moment to moment. And I don't know often like the solutions to how I feel. It makes him feel helpless too, because he's just looking for direction from me. And so that actually makes me feel even worse. So that is not a silver lining. Um, <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> oh, for one, um, using my lip liner, my khaki lip liner from Frive. Another attempt at a silver lining. My mom, 
is coming to see me. All I've wanted this whole time is my mom. <laughs> I miss her so much. <sighs> oh God, oh God, what just happened? How did that happen? Look at that. <gasps> what happened? Oh, the little, uh, the little wipey offy part stayed in the cap. Can we remedy that? Okay. Whew. Well, that was a, that was a lesson in packaging science, wasn't it? Okay, that was fun. Let's see what we got here. Oh, <laughs> um, I really like these. They are so amazing, guys. I love these Rowan lip glosses. They are so pretty. So even like the deepest color. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Look at that. They're all super, super like daytime wearable in the sense that like they just put like a wash of color. They're not going to be something that you feel like you have to constantly touch up and maintain. That's so nice. And they're really minty. So they actually feel like plumping. Wow. I didn't think that was gonna work out. And it's actually so, so beautiful. <laughs> and I kind of mean that for the whole makeup look. Like I really didn't think that the makeup look was gonna work out, but it's really beautiful. Um, but yeah, my mom not only is coming to see me, she's gonna see me for like six days and this is not, I mean, this is in July and I'm not due until like October, but she also knows that she wants to socially distance and she has this like whole elaborate plan about how when she gets here, she's going to like, throw her mask in the garbage outside before she even comes in, go directly upstairs, wash her, like leave her shoes in the garage for like two days and throw all of her clothes into a hot load of laundry and like immediately take a shower so that she doesn't, you know, pass any contamination on. And she's gonna wear, she's gonna bring like a mother load of masks uh, on, on the plane with her because she's also asthmatic and it's like, she, it makes her high risk. And so that to me, you know, she's being very brave and coming to see me, but we miss each other so much. I love my mom so much. I miss her so much. Oh, and the other thing is because she's socially distancing and because plane tickets are so cheap right now, she, this is so atypical for her. This is not something she would do, but she justified it because A, the prices were so low and B, she wanted more distance between her and the next person. She's like, you're not the only one who can fly first class khaki. And I was just like, you go mom, that's awesome. So yeah, she's flying first class to come here. So I'm actually gonna, yeah, sorry, I didn't say it. I'm gonna use the Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray here and we're gonna use like two sprays. <laughs> Maybe three, okay. It has a flavor. It has a glycerin flavor. Glycerin tastes kind of sweet. That's why uh, when you get soap in your mouth, it tastes sweet. Ah, oh, okay. Like three sprays is so beautiful. Look at that. You just don't feel like there's anything on your face. And so that's why you wanna keep going. It really doesn't feel like anything, but it's just cause it's so light. So let's talk about the actual products real quick. Um, the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, unfortunately, is an absolute like knock it out of the park home run. Like. I'm not always impressed by her ideas and by, you know, the, her prices, especially. I'm always just like, really? A $60 thing of like four eyeshadows? Who are you? This is really good. <laughs> Dang it, it's really, really good. The Rowan lip glosses, I truly cannot recommend highly enough. I, this honestly might be my favorite lip gloss release of like the last year or year and a half. Like I like these so, so, so much. And I think that they are truly, like universal and they're plumping and they're lovely and they actually feel like a lip balm. And then what was the other thing? Oh, thank you to Root Pretty for sending me this stuff. This is in glass by the way, and this is in metal. It's all like pretty close to zero waste. I mean, you know, you can recycle the lid and stuff, but yeah, uh, the skincare didn't blow my mind, but these are really, really beautiful. I like this cheek product a whole lot. And this highlighter is giving, I mean, it's just the most intoxicating, like, glitter, just shimmer vibes. Mm. Thank you for listening to me uh, kvetch about all of this stuff. I just feel like it's maybe on me to increase my tolerance for criticism on every level, because I think I owe it to the people who genuinely value my content and are here because they wanna hang out with me, not just watch makeup content that I stay a lot truer to myself than I have because I do feel like my content has been so watered down lately because I'm so 
scared of criticism. If you got this far in my rant, I just want to say thank you. Leave me a little rainbow down in the comments. If you did, one of those little rainbow emojis. Also, happy Pride Month. Um, thank you for all of your comments. I, I genuinely don't think that criticism is bad. I think it's my fault for uh, letting it get to me so much and taking it so personally and not, and like throwing the baby out with the bathwater, you know, like letting one nasty comment overpower so many amazing nice ones. Like that's on me. So that's what I'm gonna be, one of the many things that I'm going to be working on right now. But yeah, if you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, this is my first video you're watching. <laughs> Welcome, this is kinda of weird, but okay. Um, but yeah, maybe subscribe if you want. Uh, but yeah, thanks guys for watching. I love you so freaking much and I appreciate you so much and I will see you in the next one.